things that go bump in the night. What's up, Jesus? Me. Sam B. Okay. Shrunken head, broken legs, body parts on the concrete. Cut them up, put your stout gators in the swamp. Red light, leave them dead, running like a track meet. Scared of nobody. What you know who I am. Swamp. You have any idea who you're talking to? Or oh, maybe you saw me in the play I play for the fucking the goddamn champions. Well, they cooking me cannibal trying to eat. Uh, I got a zombie on me and you can't harm me. Hey, yeah, watch it. Who do you do, bitch? Drink blood like a vampire without warning. Who do you do, do bitch? Stand up. Sam B got the thing that go bump in the night. Whoa. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Yeah, this is my review on Dead Island 2. But first, to let you know, Dead Island was created by Techline at Deep Silver way back in 2011 then tech nine left deep silver to create the dying light series now dapper bus studios are the ones who created dead island 2 deep silver published it and used the epic online services when i heard epic put their finger in dead island 2 i got a little excited if you didn't know epic created fortnite saved the world a zombie game with tons of different weapons and famous for their character skins fortnite saved the world is a great zombie game Save the world is tough. Their trophies achievements are pretty hard and long to achieve also. I honestly thought we were going to get a tough semi grindy zombie game. Fine, you know, with stay. some save the world elements. Else is moving, but no, we so did it. Dead Island 2 is different from the Dead Island 1 sleeping. at Riptide. This way. But it kept the same feel. Once I started Dead Island 2, it felt like I what picked up right after Riptide with Dead Island shit. feeling, How which ridiculous. was great. But Dead Island 2 was different. Everything from Dead Island 1 and Riptide wasn't brought over. There's no vendor to donate materials to get XP. As many as you can find. The funny dialogue from NPC vendors. Where the hell did I put that? And there's a lot less. Die, ugly fuck! Holy shit! There's no skill tree. There's no farming for legendaries. Which, that's one of the main reasons why we farm. Don't believe me? That's the main thing everyone does on the Borderlands series. When there's a loot drop system, that's what keeps us playing the game to get the ultimate loot. Oh yeah, and there's a lot less. Oh, what the fuck? Dead Island 2 has humor, but it's a different humor. If you haven't tried Dead Island 1 and Riptide, try it. They're super cheap, and don't miss out on that good old pastime fun. Alright, moving on to Dead Island 2 and what it delivered. Well, as I mentioned before, there's no skill tree. It was changed to mod cards. Different? But it's cool. You can mix and match to play your own playstyle. There's also one mod to make the game more challenging, but it's still easy. It's nothing like the first Dead Island and Riptide. It still has co-op. Oh, did I also mention it's a three-player co-op, not a four-player co-op like Dead Island 1 and Riptide? The game did deliver on its beautiful environment, great graphics, the movement was up to speed. You were able to mantle, jump, slide, drop kick. The flow of it was great. It also was very detailed on the dismembering of zombies. Very bloody. The zombies were very detailed, and the cosmetics of different zombies for every location you went to, they had different clothes, which was cool. Alright, characters. There's six all total. I played through the one that looks like Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Alright. The story, as you know, the story continues from the previous Dead Iron series, and it reaches Los Angeles, California, also known as L.A. Your plane crashes, and there's where the zombie outbreak starts. And you try to escape L.A. During that time, you help survivors find out who, what, when, how, and why. The story was okay, but it wasn't amazing, stuff. but it wasn't boring. Upon Let's the completion of the main story, I started the DLCs. I started with Sola. Sola is a music festival. Short, but a lot of fun. Very spacious for you to run around in. Once again, the environment is beautiful and colorful. It was like being at an amusement park. It was fun. This DLC gives a little bit more on how the outbreak came around. You get a couple more new zombies added to the game experience, which to me, they were the hardest ones in the game. A couple more new weapons. 
and now the DLC Hoss was another very, very short DLC. This delivered more of a horror zombie feel to it, a little disturbing, and it raised a few questions like who thinks of stuff like this. And this DLC tells you who did this to you and why you were chosen. it down or sell it to the vendor. You need materials to upgrade your weapons and cash to repair. Materials are not needed to repair, just cash. But materials are needed to craft more ammo. Secondly, if you unlock a side quest, do it as soon as you receive it. Most likely you'll get a named weapon. The only bad part of this, if you're low rank, you gotta keep leveling up the weapon as you level up. Third thing is safes or lock boxes that require a key to open. Don't worry, once you complete the main quest and the side quest for that map location, a special named enemy will appear in the area of the safe or lock box and so you'll be able to obtain it. I'll take Four, it. challenges. Once you hit around rank 20, start looking at your challenges. You get a bonus for completing the section, and some of them are a count. As in, you complete it with one character, all your characters get it or you could continue the progress on another character. All right, for the good, the bad, and the zombie. The game is smooth. I didn't run into any bugs or lag or crashes in solo or co-op. Epic did their part. Now, the interaction with the stuff was great. I didn't feel any latency from commands when I pressed or switched to an item weapon reload or picking something up. The flow from the running to jumping on mantling over a wall or fence was smooth, and also, that was great. The game is fun. Yes, it delivered on fun. I had lots of fun. But, um, there is no end game to keep you going, keep playing the game. Once you complete, that's pretty much it. There is no new game plus. From my experience, there was no legendary drops to farm. All the legendaries that I obtained was from quest rewards, but you can obtain more of the same weapon by doing it again on someone else's storyline. There's not many weapons on top of that. Also, another thing is, if you got a friend that just got the game and you completed yours, they can't join your lobby. You can only join the person who started fresh. It happened to me. When I continued playing the game, my nephew tried to join back in and he got a message saying the game you're trying to join is too far into the storyline bummer so they took away the help of friend max out rank boost you know where you can join a high rank and he just does everything real fast and you rank up yeah that's gone all right trophy achievements are super easy to obtain in the end i really enjoyed playing the game i did have fun but for a limited time only before you get bored of doing the same few things over and over I got the gold edition. It came with the season pass on sale for 45, which is not bad, but it's worth around $30 range. I completed the main quest story, lost and founds, all trophy achievements, and most of the challenges within a 49 hour range with just one one playthrough. The music wasn't bad either. But really, I'm going to give the game a 10 out of 10 for fun. But the game itself, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't terrible and it wasn't amazing, but it is playable from beginning to end with no issues. And that's wonderful. But everyone, I hope this is useful. I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching. Till the next time. And remember, don't get bit. Hello, big fella.